to uh, Yasuo to provide today's lecture. All right. <clears throat> yeah. uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Henry. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead. Yes. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for the the kind introduction. Um, as as Henry said, um, I I'm going to be talking about the work I did in my uh, this last internship uh, this last summer uh, with the IBM people um, on modeling uh, quantum noise in the uh, in the quantum experience devices. Um, the work uh, was in the supervision of of Omar Shahab from IBM. My supervisor is uh, Gregory uh, Cross. Uh, well, my name is Yasuo Oda. Um, my email is not here, but anyways, like if someone uh, wants to chat after this, please uh, feel free to uh, to get, uh, get get in touch. Uh, I'm sure you can you can get my email from somewhere. If not, I'll give it to you. Um, and uh, please also feel free to stop uh, stop me at any point and ask questions. Uh, interrupt as many times as uh, as you like. Um, and so the the title I think is pretty, pretty much self explanatory. But the goals the goal and motivation of the of the project was to to produce a noise model that was uh, realistic enough, but it was also effective in the sense that we don't want to include all of the degrees of freedom that would be too, too complicated to simulate um, and to characterize if we wanted, uh, if, uh, if we wanted to actually do any real work with it. Uh, but we want to keep the minimum, the minimum amount of, um, of parameters, of noise parameters that we can. So we want a simplest model that we can that also has predictive power. So that's, that was the goal of the, of the project. Um, one of the main reasons why we were interested in this, because we, we know from, uh, from recent experiments and from recent research that uh, many, many of the noise features that we see on the quantum experience devices involve uh, uh, involved, involved correlated type of noise in, in time and space. And so we're interested in, in studying how we can include time correlations um, and space correlations into the noise modeling. Um, and so uh, the the way we structure this uh, this this model was with specifically these four ingredients with spam errors, um, relaxation, um, uh, defacing, and controllers. In which in the um, in controllers specifically convenient in the IBM devices because the, all the native gates are essentially just two two x rotations. Um, and so, so far, uh, everything we've seen we've uh, we've. Uh, model and tested is on single qubit systems. So I'll be talking about all sing single qubit experiments um, and simulations. Um, and so we're, we're currently moving forward to, uh, to two, qubit, uh, two qubit errors. But everything you see here is single qubit. Um, and essentially, uh, what I'm going to be showing you is, uh, is a set of experiments um, that can be essentially um, called characterization experiments. So we have essentially a set of experiments we, we perform in order to be able to extract all of the noise, all of the relevant noise parameters. And then uh, we perform simulations in the sense of sort of borrowing uh, notation from machine learning maybe, uh, or we, we perform validations in validation simulation. Um, and then we perform uh, a testing simulation on new circuits that the, the, the noise model has not seen yet. Um, so let me move on uh, to the characterization, characterization experiments. The I'm going to be skipping spam because it's very it's what we're doing is actually very simple. It's not we're not doing anything fancy. It's pretty much what comes with, with the Qiskit package. So if you're familiar with the Qiskit package, you know everything there is to know about our our noise model. Uh, we are looking forward to do something uh, some, some maybe more more sophisticated um, spam, spam uh, characterization and mitigation uh, techniques, but you know, something we've included yet. And so I'm going to be start, uh, starting with relaxation noise, uh, which is possibly the, the one that's most familiar with everyone. Uh, what we do is we just perform T1 experiments. We prepare the state and we prepare the, 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 the qubit in, in the one state. And we just wait for it to relax into the ground state. And the, uh, the results is a familiar uh, T1 relaxation curve that, that we pro probably many of you have seen. Um, where, where, where we measure is the decay the probability between a, of the one state and to the ground state. So we see that after a long enough amount of time, we see that the probability decays to zero. And the interesting thing is that there are some experiments where you uh, can, we, we, if you perform the characterization experiment, you can see that the, the T1 time is, that, you, that you get is fairly close to the, the reported time. For example, when I performed these experiments, the reported time was 157 microseconds. And after doing this experiment, I found 159. But actually, if and here you can see in the right pattern, if, if actually uh, we uh, we repeated this experiment 20 times in a, in a two hour window, um, this experiment is one of them. 
And what we found is that the, the, uh, that the mean uh, T1 time that we found is 108 microseconds plus minus 30, which is, I don't know if it's very obvious, but it's not even close to the reported one. <laughs> and so essentially I, the take home message of this, this figure here is that uh, the, 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 the uh, um, calibration that IBM performs um, uh, is done less, is typically done less uh, often than the fluctuation, characteristic fluctuation times of, of the noise parameters. And so this sort of calls for, for our attention and, and um, tells us that maybe what we need to do is characterize more often if we actually need to uh, mitigate the, I guess, get, get more accurate information of the noise. Um, and so this is in some sense motivation, like experimental motivation for, for our work. And um, so that's, that's essentially how we get our, our T1 time or relaxation uh, just from simple T1 experiment. And the phasing, the phasing is a little more interesting uh, because we, uh, we we know that uh, the the phasing the, the phasing noise sources of the phasing noise have some contribution of, of coherence and it's not it's not entirely Markovian. Um, and I'm going to show you some experiments in the next the next couple of slides. But first, let me introduce uh, the the mathematical framework that we use to analyze. Uh, time correlations in, in the quantum system dynamics, and which is called the field of function formalism. Uh, please, if you're not familiar, this would be a, like, a, like a lightning fast introduction. If you're not familiar with this and um, you have questions, please uh, stop, stop me at any point. Uh, but the idea here is that we, as, as, uh, we split the Hamiltonian into a noise Hamiltonian and a control Hamiltonian. We allow both of these to be time dependent. The control Hamiltonian, I think it's more intuitive why it's time dependent. Um, but what we find from um, from doing the the um, from from essentially uh, moving forward with the filter function formalism uh, protocol is that uh, the the um, the distance at which we can uh, distance in, in in operator space uh, at which we can we can uh, aim for the for the target gate for example it could be an X gate or it could be a, a, a Z gate or whatever type of gate you want to perform uh, is actually uh, actually depends on time. Um, and the operator that we the, the operator that we produce that, that performs the, the, the full the, the full time evolution of the system uh, is, is going to be um, typically uh, typically far from the from target gate. Um, in the filter function formalism pres prescription uh, tells you that uh, if if we compute the the uh, state fidelity between the the original the, the, the target state this is the ideal final state and the actual noisy state that we have here. Uh, where the U of T is, is, is the full time evolution, uh, we see that the 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 decay, probability decay the decay uh, the decay of the probability can uh, can be given by this overlap integral in frequency between what we call the the, the power um, the, the noise power spectrum uh, here S of omega, and that essentially tells you where in frequency the noise is most relevant, and so it's essentially telling you um, the the frequency contribution of, of the noise. In what we call the filter function, the f of omega, that uh, describes the qubit sensitivity in the frequency domain. And so essentially, the, the, the filter function formalism is telling you that the decay in the, pro, in the ideal probability is going to be given by the overlap in frequency of the, the sensitivity of the qubit and the, the uh, location in frequency of the noise. Um, that's sort of the intuition behind it. I hope it makes sense. Please uh, also feel free to, to, to ask questions. And, and so essentially what we what we do next is we perform experiments to try to analyze this this decay and see what um, see how, how how it performs and in order to do that uh, we're going to use the this um, the, this numerical tool called, called Schwarma. Uh, Schwarma is essentially uh, a, a form a, is it, it's a method that allows us to model the errors in uh, in, the, in these quantum circuits as gates, uh, sort of noisy gates inserted in between uh, the ideal gates. And so if we have, we have an ideal uh, circuit uh, of all gates called G, essentially, this is for example, for example the qubit circuit that I got from, from uh, the original Schwarma paper. Uh, what we do is we insert uh, these noisy gates S to sort of represent the effect of the noise on the circuit. Uh, these uh, S gates are drawn from, uh, from the noise spectrum S of omega. And so we use Schwarma for two purposes: one, to efficiently simulate the effect of the, the effect of correlated noise, in this case, the phasing noise, one we're, we're studying here, um, but also to to be able to like backtrack the the noise spectrum from experiments, so we can actually use uh, experiment survival probabilities of, of states 
uh, to reconstruct the, the noise spectrum. So this is this is a technique that's known known as quantum noise spectroscopy. If you're familiar with it, it's, pretty, it's essentially what we're we're using the filter form formation filter function formation for. Um, in Schwarma is, is an efficient uh, an efficient, efficient and systematic way of doing that. Um, and so the the experiments, the characterization experiments we use for the phasing noise are called FTTPS experiments that stand for fixed fixed total time pulse sequences, which uh, consist of sequences of uh, identity gates and uh, x x gates inserted in between these identity gates. So, for example, the the this 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 these uh, series of circuits start with with the first one that has it's just a series of identity gates. So this is essentially doing nothing. This is uh, very similar to um, to, to a um, defacing uh, T2 rel relaxation experiment, you prepare in the um, a, you prepare in the plane of the box sphere, and then you let evolve and decay. Um, but then uh, the next sequence, the, the 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 next the next circuit, the next if the PS circuit actually consists of of uh, identity gates with X insertions at, at uh, specifically chosen locations uh, in time. And so, uh, if you keep going in in FTTPS sequence, you get you get more of these insertions. And this is very familiar. This is very similar if you're familiar with uh, CPMG sequences, for example. Um, what the, the difference here is essentially the location of the X pulses, but in in spirit, this very is very close. Um, and the idea here, the intuition is that uh, doing nothing on um, doing nothing here uh, and just letting the state evolve. Uh, has a very strong contrib contribution in, in low frequency. So here you see uh, the uh, filter function for for each of these circuits, and in blue you see the first one. You see that that here in the x-axis you see frequency. You see that most of the contribution of the filter function, this is most of the sensitivity of the qubit in frequency, is located for low at low frequency. But as we start inserting these um, these x pulses, what we get is that we are able to shift the location of these uh, these filter function peaks. In frequency to higher frequencies, and then we essentially get uh, we 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 get the, the the peak shifted to a higher frequency, um, and by doing this with uh, with enough number of of, of FTTPS sequences, what we get is that we're able to explore most of the frequency space that that we have access to, um, essentially by 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 shifting the the peaks in frequency. Hope this makes sense. Um, again, please ask questions if, if there are questions. Um, and so the idea is we send we send these circuits to run on the quantum experience devices, and uh, the results that we get of, of measuring the, the survival priority stays here. Um, we and we are able to reconstruct the the the, the 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 experiments that we use to reconstruct the the noise spectrum from uh, look look like this. Here we see the survival priority in the x and the y axis, and the x axis we see the the order of the of the TPS. And what we find is that. The, F, the first FTTPS, this one that was essentially just mostly identity gates, has a very strong uh, decay in the in the low frequencies here. We see that essentially it goes down to like fifty percent, but then it goes very quickly it goes up, uh, and then it goes it goes down a little bit. And so when we reconstruct the noise, we what we see here in the in, in the right figure, we see that we see the reconstructed noise spectrum using trauma. What we see is that the uh, in, in log scale in both axes. Um, what we find is that the, uh, this uh, first peak correlates with a strong contribution in, in the frequency uh, in, in the low in the low frequency range, and that's ex that's expected uh, in the sense that that part of the uh, part of the intuition that we have is that some of this noise will be uh, low frequency one over f type of noise, and so this is this in some sense matches our intuition. This is something that if you want we were we were expecting. Um, but we also find a higher order FTTPS um, contribution here, a, a, a probability decay that, that is essentially translated in this model where dephasing is the most important source of noise. We find that, uh, that this is translated into a high frequency contribution of, of the noise spectrum. Um, and this is unexpected. This is not necessarily something that, that we, were, we were expecting to see. Um, but this this decay is, it looks it, it looked suspiciously uh, quadratic, and so we were wondering may, maybe this is coming from somewhere else. Maybe this is not actually the phasing noise. And so, what if it actually comes from uh, over rotations of performing uh, the sequence of of X pulses? So these FTTPS uh, gates have FTTPS circuits have a sequence of of X X pulses, and if those X pulses are not calibrated properly and have 
um, have some amount of controllers, they could lead to um, to over rotations. And so what we did is we start analyzing uh, controllers in this um, in, in this model. And essentially, what we do is we add a, a uh, the simplest one we can we can think of, which is just just a coherent uh, controller for the for the X pulses. So the control uh, control Hamiltonian would look like this. Would look like a, like um, some amplitude function with a, along sigma X that produces the X the X pulses and some and the noise Hamiltonian will be the def, time dependent dephasing term along Z uh, plus this const, constant coherent uh, error controller. And what we find by doing a quick uh, even back of the envelope calculation, you can you can easily find um, by adding also allowing for for spam. You can find the probability uh, has some some amplitude uh, contribution due to spam, but also that the probability decays as cosine squared. And so when epsilon is small enough, and this cosine squared decays with a, also with with the the, the uh, FTPS number uh, that I'm calling here k. Um, what we can do is we can we can fit the FTPS experiment. Uh, to this to this model and extract from here the the const, con, con, the, the coherent the constant over rotation parameter epsilon and here the, you can see here uh, and we see that actually fits really well it, this looks this looks fairly quadratic which means that epsilon will be in general small and we can approximate the cosine square as one you know using a, a Taylor expansion and then by subtracting both spam the spam and the controller contribution from the FDPS experiment. So you can see here that the blue curve, we subtract the green, the, the green fed due to the controller. And so we, we also subtract the, the spam contribution. We see that the, the frequency, the, the, the survival probability goes up. Uh, and you go, essentially it's, it's improved by essentially correcting or mitigating this, the, this, this uh, coherent error and this, the spam errors. And what, we, and what we see is that by reconstructing the spectrum, we get this orange curve here which is lower than general because it's, it's seeing in some sense a weaker noise, but also it's, it's uh, corrected, it's partially corrected uh, here in the high frequencies. Um, we don't see this, uh, this jump go up, which in, the, in, in, in log scale, it's a little more obvious, um, but we see that, it's, that, it's a, that it's a, uh, it, become, it becomes more flat essentially by correcting uh, with this. And so what, uh, what we do is now we grab the, this this error model that has um, spam, which has controllers, uh, co constant controllers, uh, in fact, uh, it has dephasing and relaxation, and we add all of these ingredients into um, but into into a simulator, and we simulate these uh, these these effects on the on the um, on the on the characterization experiments on these FTTPS experiments. And here on the on the left, you see uh, a 30, 30 repetitions of, of these experiments in a, in a window of 24 hours. Here that we run on Lagos on, on the quantum experience. And so the first thing you you you, know, you 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 might note is that actually there's a lot of fluctuation. Like there's a lot of variation here in the, in, in parameters. This is not something I would call a uh, a um, consistent uh, type of type of deviations from from the from the ideal experiment. And so you can see, for example, that some experiment, experiments went all the way down to 70% probability, and some actually were really good. Some, some actually were here um, almost, almost in, in the 100%. Um, you also see a strong variation here. Um, and by, by, by characterizing and extracting the noise parameters from these experiments, we find that the, the coherent over rotation varies from about 20, 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 3. This is sort of like a like a point uh, one to one uh, percent error in the in, in the um, in, in in the in the control implementation. Um, and um, after so we took we take all of these parameters and we put it into a simulator and then what we find is essentially this this figure on the right that um, if you are thinking that looks pretty much like the one on the left that's that's what we thought too. So the, and the, the essentially the conclusion that that by by including um, defacing uh, coherent defacing errors, we can actually reproduce the FTPS experiments really well. Um, and so here's, for example, the, the the mean square error between the experiments and simulations is about ten to the minus five. So we we can we can confidently say that that we are able to reproduce and validate the, the FTPS experiments uh, very well in simulation. And so. If there are no further questions, the, um, the, the, the following idea is, is uh, okay, cool, the simulator, 
is doing really well with the FTPS experiments, but it's kind of a little bit like cheating because it was trained, um, again, borrowing from machine learning terminology, it was trained on the FTPS experiments. Um, so in some sense, it's possible that it's, it's, it's to be expected that it can reproduce the FTPS experiments. Um, so can you reproduce new data, new data? Can we run new experiments? Can you reproduce those? So we, uh, we move on to actually test this, this noise model in simulation. And uh, in order to do that, we, we, uh, we perform a random, a random sequence. Um, we, we send uh, circuits consisting of random operators. Uh, specifically, we try to mimic the behavior of, of a randomized benchmarking experiment. And so we send, uh, we send sequences of, of pifor gates. We send X rotations, Y, Hadamard, uh, S gates, uh, Z gates. And so what we do, so we grab these sequences of experiments of, of varying lengths in the same in the same spirit of a randomized benchmarking experiment, and we send them to run on, on the IBM, uh, on the quantum experience. And on the simulator end, what we do is we grab these, these circuits, these random, random uh, circuits, random sequences, and what we do is we decompose the gates in, onto uh, basis gates, in this case, for example, the Y gate, we decompose it into a Z a rotation and, a y, and an X rotation. The Hadamard uh, is decomposed into a square root of X uh, gate. And this is because the native gates of the quantum experience um, well, for single qubit gates are essentially Z rotations, X and root X gates. And so this makes it very convenient to study, to study control errors, for example, since it only actually has, uh, we only need to only characterize X and square root of X errors. And so then we grab these, these uh, decomposed, these, these circuits are decomposed into the native gates of the quantum experience, and then we add the errors. So we, we, um, we insert errors where, where they're supposed to be. So for example, here, uh, this first X gate will map into an, a slightly over-rotated uh, X uh, by about 1%, for example, in this, in the, in this, uh, in this case. And then we also insert uh, D rotations in the shawarma, in the same spirit of shawarma, um, here after each gate that actually has a rotation. Z gates in this particular case, we, uh, of the quantum experience, we assume that, that since Z gates are virtual gates, we assume that they're, they're actually perfect. Um, so that, that's the type of gate that we don't characterize and we don't add any type of controller to. Uh, but so after these controllers, what we do is we insert these uh, defacing noise uh, gates and um, essentially, we take this model and we take it and, and we uh, and we take it uh, and we put it into this, the, the noisy simulator. And um, very happily and surprisingly, what we find from running the experiments for different circuit lengths, so run, essentially running an, an RB experiment, we find for, for these uh, these different circuit lengths, um, we find we find an error rate of about four times ten to the minus four, which is consistent with the error rates uh, using. Um, um, I believe um, interleaved randomized benchmarking that IBM reports, we, we find an error rate of, of about 10 to minus four, which is consistent with, uh, with the reports. Um, and then using the, the, the parameters that we find from the characterization experiments into the simulator, we find that the simulator actually matches the, um, the experiment really well. Um, and this we, um, uh, and, and this is essentially we, what we're calling the, the successful testing of, of, of the noise model. Um, so performing a FET also in the, um, in the simulator, we find, we find a similar, as you can imagine, similar air, uh, decay per, 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 per gate. And this is what the, the, the raw data looks like. You see that there's some amount of fluctuation for each circuit based on the circuit and also on the, on, on the noise, but simulator also ha has, well, in orange also has, has some, some amount of fluctuation. Uh, averaged here we see the the standard deviation error bars here on, on the left um, and so uh, interestingly um, actually so if you if you perform this this experiment uh, about 20 times you also see some amount of fluctuation here you see in in the shaded region you see, you see essentially all of the the minimum to maximum um, uh, fluctuation in in these rb experiments that we're performing uh, in in black you can see the the, the, the mean one um, and so essentially this is, I, I guess I want to leave you with the, um, maybe the take home messages that like the, the um, well, our findings say, uh, seem to suggest that the uh, quantum experience has, has a, a, a decent amount of, of noise uh, fluctuation. And so 
if, if we actually need um, highly accurate computations, uh, such as for, for performing, let's say, uh, uh, probabilistic error cancellation, uh, error mitigation, what we find uh, what we find is that we might actually need to perform the characterization more often than the parameters that uh, that are reported by IBM uh, by default from the characterization that that they perform at each calibration point. And so uh, to conclude, and I want to leave time for for questions. Essentially, we we came up with with the single qubit error model that's uh, that's very simple in the sense that it only has four four different noise parameters. Uh, relaxation, defacing, spam, and controllers that has a high, a very high degree of, of predictive power. Uh, we tested the simulation and we found uh, very good agreement with the experiment. Um, but also, um, what we found, unfortunately, is that they, there's a big variation of, uh, on, on these noise parameters. So, um, characterizing often might be, at least for now, might be necessary to get um, to, 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 to increase the accuracy. Of, um, of our error mitigation technique, for example. Um, so currently, this whole thing is packed in a, in a Python, Python, the characterization experiments and the simulation simulator uh, that hopefully will be out there uh, in, in access uh, for public access soon. And uh, we're currently working on extending these uh, error model to, to also uh, to qubit errors. Um, let me see, I think, yeah. And, and that's, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for everyone for listening. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for the great talk. So let's open the floor for questions. So you can uh, either text in the chat or uh, or unmute yourself to, uh, to ask the questions. Yeah, I can start with one. So, so you said the next step is to extend to uh, two qubit error models. What do you think um, like the difficulties, largest difficulties to uh, do the modeling of uh, multi qubit errors? So, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is a very good question. The, one of the difficulties is that um, the implementation, implementation of two qubit gates in, in the IBM devices typically require going out to a higher computational uh, uh, out, outside of the, 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 the two-state computational basis. Mm -hmm. And so doing accurate uh, hardware modeling would require to include, include higher energy levels. And that's something mm -hmm. that, at least from my perspective, would increase the complexity of the model probably, probably beyond what, what I would like. And so the, the characterization of two qubit errors, for example, like ZZ errors is one of the, uh, ZZ coupling is one of the ones that, that we are, we're uh, most interested in studying now. Uh, Victor here is present. He's uh, probably one of the world leading experts in, uh, in the, uh, ZZ, ZZ correlated errors. And so what we find um, is that, uh, what we were currently looking into is that the, the, any, any error model that we uh, come up with will probably be effective uh, effective in the sense that it won't probably be representative of the actual underlying hardware implementation. Um, and so the challenge will be to find to actually find this effective this effective model um, to, to, to represent correctly the error, although mm -hmm. not necessarily the, uh, the hardware, uh, the manipulation of, of the hardware system. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Uh, I think Judin has a question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, so Judin is curious. Uh, when uh, we adjust the frequency in the first part, uh, we insert X gates uh, in the selected positions. What if uh, it just makes some frequency sweep uh, gate instead of X gate? Um, so this is this is a, this is a good this is a good question. The um, the reason why we insert X gates is because we want to isolate, we want to make the experiment as simple as possible. So what we're doing is in some sense, a frequency sweep by inserting these, uh, these X gates. And we want to, we want to make essentially, uh, want to isolate the, the contributions of the noise parameters as much as we can. And so by making, by implementing uh, more complicated rotations, for example, or, or, or more arbitrary gates, um, what we do is essentially, um, uh, poss possibly also add, add um, a combination of other types of types of errors. And so they were motivated us to use FTPS and just this, this simple X insertion is, is that um, 
the the X gates of single qubits are typically very good. And so uh, if, the, if they weren't, as we ended up finding, um, as good as we, uh, we as we thought, we we would be able to actually track out the backtrack the the um, the effect of these errors, like in a I guess fairly straightforward way. Um, and so yeah, that's the motivation. So we want to use the the simplest gate that we could think of, the X gate, to be able to essentially <laughs> um, isolate the effect of the noise and simplify the effect of the noise as much as we could. Nice, thanks, Eugene. Good, uh, good question. Um, yeah, I see uh, Yusu is ask, asking uh, how to find the filter function. Yeah, sorry, this is a good, very good question and I did not talk about it at all. 